Did any European kings have male concubines? Well, the answer would be yes, but another question lingers. Was it forbidden? This time, the answer depends on a case-by-case -case basis. Although it was largely prohibited and frequently kept a secret, there are historical records of European monarchs and nobility having male concubines. But it should be noted that in many instances, homosexuality was viewed as a sin that should be punished, and there were regional and historical differences in the specific laws and cultural perceptions of male concubinage. As a result, it is challenging to generalize, and in today's video, we will go over the lives of these male concubines to seek the answers we are looking for. Concubinage in Europe The status of a man and woman living together as husband and wife without receiving all the benefits of a valid marriage is referred to as concubinage. The name came from the Latin word concubra, which is derived from con or with and cubari, which means to lie. Concubinage has been practiced widely since the beginning of time. According to anthropologists, the majority of societies have established a boundary between legally recognized partnerships and cohabitation between unmarried couples or casual sexual relationships. These concubines usually refer to a lady who goes into this form of relationship, but as time passed, males started entering the picture, and soon after the term male concubine became pretty popular, especially in Europe. Male concubinage had been reported as legal in some countries in Europe, such as Africa, Greece, Spain, and Rome. It was so widespread that even kings and monarchs had both female and male concubines during their reign. Records also revealed that concubinage can last for a very long time, possibly for the rest of one's life, which means being a male concubine is not a one-time thing. At most, it is a commitment. While concubines serve the same purpose, a male concubine's rights to support are more restricted than those of a wife. This is one of the many discriminations male concubines have to endure during this era. There was also a distinction between legal marriage and concubinage in ancient Mesopotamia. This was according to written records that reveal how men were allowed to have sex with concubines, as well as slaves or servants, in addition to their wives in ancient Israelite society. But their relationship should strictly remain as such. In ancient Greece, the concubine filled the role of mistress or courtesan between the wife and husband. However, concubinage had a slightly distinct status in ancient Rome. Compared to other parts of Europe, those who were unable to legally marry, such as legionary troops, or those from different social classes, like a senator and a liberated woman, turned to this as a permanent sexual relationship. While they are allowed to make their relationship more intimate, there are still restrictions and the church plays a huge role in this, as teachings from religion would more often than not frown upon these kinds of practices. However, due to the beliefs of the Christian church, the line between marriage and concubinage became blurrier with the fall of the Roman Empire. Today, concubinage has new legal, social, and cultural connotations, as more and more men and women in Europe and America want to cohabit without getting married. In France, cohabitation between heterosexuals and, since 1998, homosexual couples is referred to as concubinage, and people of all genders are given the leeway to be together. Concubinage, however, probably still carries a social stigma in various societies outside these countries, and while there has been huge progress when it comes to the acceptance of these relationships, we can't deny the fact that there are still a lot of people who are skeptical about it. Male concubines in pre-modern Europe. Europe is one of the most studied and discussed civilizations in human history, which is why it is a joy to go over the records and details the country has about different topics in history. Despite this, the lives of the male concubines are one of the diverse subjects and facets of this unusual civilization that is still poorly understood and shrouded in mystery. But based on the scarce documents about male concubinage, it can be concluded that male concubines held a specific position in ancient Greek society. Young males would often have a sexual relationship with an older man, and this bond may have developed in part as a result of traditions that required young men to live with their warrior mentors. These unions were referred to as kalakagathos, from the ancient Greek terms kaloka, which denotes beauty, and gathos, which broadly refers to excellence. In a broad sense, it is the representation of the ideal of the ancient man, 
who combined physical power and beauty with moral perfection. Kalakagathos was a crucial idea in ancient Greek culture and education, particularly during the time of classical Greece. On the other hand, male concubines in Europe had teachers who were also male concubines of kings and emperors. These teachers play an important role in training and shaping young males to become concubines. Young men were educated and trained in a range of subjects such as philosophy, the arts, eloquence, and battle. While this mentorship operates just like the others, contemporaries have criticized their partnerships because they were frequently influenced by sexual desires. Moving forward, male concubines held a particular social standing in the pre-modern era of Europe. They were often free citizens rather than slaves or prostitutes, but their status has remained lower than that of adult citizens, and they have had to abide by certain social conventions and laws. The art and literature of Europe also included representations of male concubines' lives. On numerous vases and frescoes, there are representations of male concubines and their interactions with adult spouses. Because of this, male concubines are frequently mentioned and utilized as symbols of love, beauty, and youth in literary works like plays and poems. Stories of male concubinage in Greek mythology the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles is one of the most famous and discussed examples of male concubines. Their story was narrated by Homer in his famous work, The Iliad. Even if their relationship wasn't the main subject of the epic poem, it was nonetheless crucial to capturing Troy. Some sources claim they were cousins, although Homer depicted them as allies in war and combat. Homer did not specifically address their sexual relationship in the Iliad, but a lot of academics and literary experts think that they had erotic affection for one another. This is based on how they demonstrated their loyalty and love for one another, as well as how they reacted to one another's deaths. The partnership between Alexander the Great and Hepatian is another illustration of this type of relationship. They had a rightful reputation for being among the most well-known and cherished male friendships in history. Alexander's confidant and concubine was Hepatian, in addition to having a physical relationship, Alexander and Hepatian shared a close spiritual bond, which made their bond so much stronger. European kings and their male concubines. Although the Netherlands, the first nation to legalize homosexual marriage in 2001, started the trend for a queer monarch to formally wear the throne, LGBTQ people have long done so clandestinely. This is why the Dutch monarchy made headlines around the world when it declared that royals are allowed to marry same-sex partners without reneging on their reign. But did you know that there were significant leaders from centuries, even millennia ago, who transcended sexual and gender divides? Some were praised by their followers, while others were demonized. One of them was the Roman Emperor Hadrian, who once focused his attention on his male lover. He was engaged in a loveless political matchmaking union with the great niece of his predecessor, which encouraged him to find the love he was looking for in someone else. High-ranking Romans frequently had male lovers in addition to their wives, but Hadrian was almost slavishly dedicated to Antinous, his youthful consort, and it didn't take that long before their story shocked the kingdom. In England, one prominent king was also known for his intense relationship with his courtier, by the name of Piers Gaveston. I am talking about Edward II of England, who enjoyed a very strong bond with his favorite. There is some debate over whether the relationship was romantic or simply a very close friendship. At the same time, many would say that there is no doubt that King Edward II had other male concubines, especially considering the account books that show payments made to male prostitutes. Despite his marriage, there is also enough evidence to suggest that he and Piers Gaveston were in an open relationship. On the other hand, Gaveston haughtily took advantage of his position of favoritism to seize control over others. The other barons were incensed by this and planned to capture and kill Gaveston after numerous conflicts and revolutions, and eventually, Edward II was overthrown and killed as too. Male concubines are frequently mentioned and utilized as symbols of love, beauty, and youth in literary works like plays and poems. This topic reflects the diversity and complexity of human history and helps us better grasp the cultural, social, and moral facets of European society. While these stories might sound bizarre to others, 
It's undeniable that these relationships once blossomed in Europe and created stories worth telling. How about you? What do you think about male concubines during pre-modern Europe? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more stories from history.